Hello everybody and welcome to Tech Lore. Today I'm going to talk to you about some eh, interesting stuff. So macOS Big Sur is Apple's latest version of macOS with some nice under the hood changes. However, an article came out with a very catchy title. Your computer is not yours. Very hooky. Very catchy. The privacy community loves a good story where Apple especially is accused of doing several terrible things, so it spread like wildfire and I would know I'm in California. So all of this happened and then Apple responded. Some other researchers responded and now everyone is just kind of confused and pissed off without some general takeaway. We covered this a bit in our Surveillance Report News podcast, which you should check out. This video is going to cover the claims that were made, which ones are accurate, why they are or are not accurate, and what they truly mean for you who's watching. Claim 1. OCSP requests on macOS are unencrypted, so anyone who's a middleman can intercept this data. We'll talk about what this is soon. 2. These requests go to a third party, Akamai. 3. Apple is in the PRISM project, an NSA project part of the Snowden revelations. 4. A claim that's made but isn't directly specified is this completely bypasses tools like Little Snitch and VPNs. More on both of those later. 5. The final claim, which isn't strictly made in the article, but heavily tied to as kind of a final conclusion is, this is what people have been talking about. The world Richard Stallman and Cory Doctorow predicted. Uh, it has come in macOS Big Sur. These claims together paint a picture that Apple really screwed up and should, by almost all accounts, not be trusted anymore. So let's cover each claim and see what's really happening. I want to start by saying this video is not about macOS versus Linux or FOSS versus proprietary. Um, it's simply analyzing the massive claims that have been made. I'm not on Apple's side here or the article side. I'm on the side of just trying to get the truth and for you to understand what all of this information means for you. So claim one, OCSP requests that are unencrypted. First, OCSP is something found on pretty much every operating system, including Linux. It's a security tool to verify that when you open a program, that program is legitimate and authorized to run. OCSP is generally a good thing, but the claim here is Apple was submitting these unencrypted so anyone could intercept them, including the network your computer is on, like your Starbucks Wi-Fi, your ISP, like Comcast, uh, AT&T, or enter the other two options you have, and any other theoretical adversaries. The data involved could be sensitive as well, including what the program is and the IP address. Jacopo, a member of the InfoSec community, check out his blog and Twitter, analyzed these claims and was kind enough to send over some audio explaining what this all means for you. What I found is not really surprising for anyone knowing how OCSP works. But basically, uh, macOS sends the serial number of developer certificates of some of the apps you open. And the problem is that uh, it does so in plain text, so with no encryption whatsoever. These serial numbers that are leaked aren't really meaningful by themselves. And this means they could guess which apps you open if they analyze your traffic. Of course, knowing this, you can decide if this is a threat to you or not. I think there is no general answer to that. But I find it very important that facts are reported as accurately as possible so that users can make their own informed decision. And I think this wasn't the case initially. Uh, people were oversimplifying a lot and sometimes we have exaggerated claims. I would also like to point out that this is not new with macOS Big Sur. Uh, in fact, it has been like that since at least uh, macOS Mojave. The biggest news since then is that Apple acknowledged the problem. Apple said they've stopped logging IP addresses related to these requests and they are removing from their logs any IP address that was previously collected. Uh, they also confirmed that they are moving to a new protocol that uses encryption, so I'm glad that hopefully all of this will be over soon. Thanks, Jacopo, and he has a blog written about this whole topic if you want to read it, which includes a lot more evidence, data, and I think a more unbiased perspective on the situation. It is nice to hear Apple acknowledge this and will be replacing OCSP, or at least updating it with some new encrypted and updated protocol. So this claim is true, though be aware its impacts are up for debate. 
Claim 2 doesn't have attached evidence, this has to do with the CDN Akamai, but it's pretty common knowledge that Apple has a meta CDN, a contents delivery network, which is how they supply things like their iOS updates for billions of devices, iTunes, and other important things. And Akamai and Lilite are supposedly their two major ones. There's an interesting research article breaking down how these work. It's actually pretty fascinating if you've never looked into this. The important takeaway is there's nothing inherently wrong with the CDNs. The original article heavily insinuates that this is strictly malicious when these CDNs are used for a lot of different necessary things that aren't inherently evil. But yes, there is a possibility these CDNs are being used to possibly collect the information from the OCSP stuff. Though there's no evidence I could find that A, these CDNs are used for OCSP requests, and B, there's actually any misuse of the data. So while someone who's more cautious may see this as an immediate red flag, be aware this claim makes a lot of assumptions which just aren't really proven. So this is mostly false. Claim 3, Apple is in the NSA Prism project which guarantees NSA access to user data. This is kind of common knowledge already in the privacy community. In short, a program revealed by Edward Snowden was the PRISM project, which shows the NSA is able to gain data from companies that are part of the project, including Google, Facebook, Apple, and many more. This is true, 100%, though again, keep in mind there's no way for us to know for a fact that these OCSP requests are something maliciously built to be a part of the PRISM project. It's easy to draw that conclusion, but there's no evidence for it. Another important piece is, to most people, this is not a huge concern. While we do chase for absolute privacy and stand against national surveillance, the reality in 2020 is the NSA has taps on pretty much everything around us, and the threat model involved to get away from this is seen as an extreme. So this claim is mostly correct, though I don't really think it fits into the rest of this article and the concerns it's trying to bring up. Claim 4 is this bypasses things like little snitch and VPNs. Little Snitch is a paid program I don't think many people have heard of before this article was posted. In short, it's a paid program that allows you to block these kinds of requests as a privacy tweak. First, I do recommend keeping these on and not blocking them as it's a security feature, but second, this was just an update. There's no evidence that Apple intentionally built their entire Big Sur update around the idea of bypassing Little Snitch. In fact, Little Snitch is already working on an update that's gonna work with Big Sur, so this isn't really an issue. As for VPNs, this was almost entirely false. Uh, any VPN that was implementing things properly reported this was not true and it didn't impact them. So this claim, I think, is pretty false. Claim five, which is the overall claim. This is the world that Richard Stallman and Cory Doctorow predicted, as if this is the end of privacy and security on Apple's macOS ecosystem. It's pretty false. Um, as Hakobo said earlier, this is nothing new in Big Sur. If you do believe this, then this would have happened a long time ago. Um, and it shouldn't really be used to push the idea that this is new to Big Sur and you should avoid Big Sur specifically. Now I'm not saying this theoretical world doesn't already exist, because to some degree it does, and this is clearly a debatable question. Um, I just disagree with the narrative that Big Sur is the pivotal moment that Richard Stallman's and Cory Doctorow's world has officially begun. So let's put everything together. If you used a VPN, likely no need to worry. If you're already using a Mac, Big Sur introduces nothing new that isn't already running on your machine, and you can likely benefit from some of the new privacy and security features. This is an issue though. I think everyone agrees OCSP requests should be encrypted, and Apple has said they're working on that. In the meantime, I wouldn't freak out. You have to remember, Apple makes countless good decisions for the privacy and security world, at least compared to almost every other major tech company, and this was one of their bad ones, and it won't be the last. It seems the original article, though, was kind of being used to push an agenda, because many of these claims were themselves fallacies or built on fallacies. The second claim with CDNs, the NSA PRISM project, the mention of room 641A as proof that your traffic will be maliciously analyzed. These are all designed to push the idea that Apple simply cannot be trusted under any situation versus just sticking to the core issue of OCSP requests, which is the real core issue of all of this. These fallacies break down the arguments as, sure, let's say room 641A is relevant here, 
They don't mention that people using Linux aren't safe either unless they use a VPN, or really anyone that's not encrypting 100% of their traffic from all of their devices, FOSS or proprietary. It's just not a relevant argument. This is like saying Mayor Howard can't be trusted to run a city because he couldn't run a family. While we can try and form comparisons, there are a lot of assumptions being made for two things that aren't inherently related. So while I appreciate the original post outlining all these issues in the first place, which caused all these discussions to come up, I do wish it was brought up in a more balanced manner that didn't encourage such an opinion-based take on a technical issue. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank Kakapo for helping out and sending over some audio clips to explain some of this stuff. And I do want to thank Jeffrey Paul as well for even bringing this issue up and starting the train that is causing Apple to make improvements for the privacy of their users. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a like below. Make sure to subscribe to all of our channels. Um, we're on Library, we're on PeerTube, we're on YouTube. We have the Surveillance Park podcast, and we have a lot of other fun stuff. Check out our website. We have a lot of cool things in the works. I want to thank our patrons especially. Always a big thank you, and make sure to join our Patreon. We also have Kofi and PayPal direct donations, as well as Monero, if you want to support what we do and our mission. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Yeah.